The challenge was simple. How good could I build a bag with £1,000 budget? Do you know what? That was easier said than done. I think when you think about £1,000, it's a fairly substantial sum. But don't forget, these products that I've put together in this What's in the Bag are all current products. So there's nothing that is uh, from the second-hand market. These are all from ranges from the top brands that are all currently available. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test each one of those and provide you the data as to why I selected the product, how it stands up still right now as being a very good performing piece of kit. I'm going to start off with the irons, the most substantial purchase you're going to make when you put any bag together. Uh, but for this instance, we're going to be reaching for the, uh, the Callaway bag. And it's the, uh, the Maverick irons uh, that were released in 2020, but still very much part of the current range in terms of what Callaway have to offer. A real decent iron sort of uh, performed really, really well in the testing. When it was first released, it's pitched in at what I would call a realistic price point at new. Um, I picked these up or could have picked these up five through to pitching wedge at six irons at about £400. I think it's £408 off the Callaway pre-owned site. And there's an option to get a little bit more money off those, uh, which I'll talk about later. But an all-round decent performer, I think. Um, easy, to, uh, easy to loft. I would say it's a forgiving iron. I think it's, uh, it's strongly lofted. So we're expecting a bit of yardage, but as you can see from the numbers that I'll throw up on screen for you now, it does a real good job, performed well, hit all the numbers that you'd see from many of the new releases in 21 in terms of game improvement irons. And at 400 quid for six irons, I think that's a decent start to the bag. That's not a bad start to the video either. What a shot. Right, we'll go further up in the bag first of all. And I've gone into a five iron and then for me, as you know at the moment, I'm very much into blending that set, leaving out the four irons and I would go into a hybrid. And for me, I would be going to a four hybrid and the choice I would make in terms of value that's out there right now would be the Mizuno CLK. It's an incredibly good product. It's incredibly well priced. It's 119 British pounds at the minute. And again, if you compare that to the 2021 product, it's incredibly good value. If you look at my review earlier on, uh, I think that was uh, into last year, it was, I was so much in favor of it. It looks incredibly good. Great shafts in there, adjustability as well in there. So for me, again, going back to that, how to gap your bag, really important at that top end to pick hybrids and fairways that have adjustability. Make sure you get that bang on. So to have all that, into a hybrid that looks as good as the CLK does at 119, it would definitely be the next club up in the bag for me. I'd go for hybrid and I'd look to get that loft adjusted to sit at something that really sat in nice after my longest iron in the bag, which would be a five wood. It performs so, so well, versatile, easy to use, all them things that we like. But more importantly, in this video, at 119, it's a perfect price point to complement those irons that we've got so far. Right, next one up in the bag, it comes out of the ping locker and uh, it's the G400 and what a range of clubs this was and still is. Whether you choose to go for a five wood or a three wood, this again is still for sale at, uh, to buy off the shelf as a new product. I didn't know it still existed, but G400 is still around and rightly so. The driver was phenomenal, the fairways were phenomenal. It's a real good set of uh, product that they put together. And that's probably been further enhanced into this G425. But if we're looking to save some money, then this is where it's at. And you can still pick these things up at an incredible price. And I've got to say, for me, one of the best fairway woods that I've hit and I talk about the G400 range, G410, G425, they've been phenomenal. And I do think there are improvements in the G425, but like I said, if price is an issue, and it is in this video, then there's plenty of value in the G400 range. And you're still getting an incredibly good product, easy to hit, easy to launch, and solid, solid build. So the prices, again, that are on offer, and I've just, gone from my head exactly what the price of this one is, so it'll be flashed up on the screen for you now. But what I do know is, it offers incredible good value. 
five iron or three iron, depending on how you want to gap it, before we go up into that final club at the top end of the bag, and that's the driver. Right, the fairway woods were 159. You know that anyway, because it's come up on screen, but there you go. So we're 159 for the fairway woods, three or five, like I said, best option. And now it's into driver. And the driver they're gonna pick, don't forget, is still brand new, off the shelf. It's still available in a current range. It's gonna come in at 269. Now, arguably in 2021, there are some drivers that have actually come in out the brand new range in 2021, lesser price than this. But I'd still argue, are you getting as good a product as what I'm about to show you? Because for me, the best driver over the past three or four years, five years, the standout product for me is this driver and it's still available to buy right now. It's the Ping and it's the G400 Max. It's out of that same range. It's the product that I effectively gained for a good few years. And uh, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, have I really gained anything from the switches I've made since? Probably not very, very little and nuances is how I describe them in terms of what those gains are and they're very personal. But for me, the G400 Max was a game changer. It was, when it was released, the most forgiving driver out there on the marketplace and I still believe it's not far behind what is the G425. Incredibly sort of user-friendly, appeal to many, many golfers and I just think it does everything you want. And like I said, forgiveness looks good performs very well and from a brand that you can really trust in ping so for me at 269 the driver would go out in the bag without doubt would be the g400 max i still love this thing let's see what we can get out of it there's no reason why that shouldn't still be in my bag now but that's the driver at 269 that's going in the bag at under a thousand pounds to put together when i go straight back down the other end and we're going into the wedges right we're in top end of the bag is done right the way back down we went to pitching wedge don't forget into those maverick irons so we now need some wedges and for me there's only one place to go and that is into the cleveland cbx wedges they've appeared on pretty much every recommendation in terms of videos that i've produced for average golfers these are no-brainers they make chipping just that short game that little bit easier. Now we've got to put two of these in the bag and how you decide to do that will be up to you. But I've gone for the CBX original version. 79.99 is what I managed to pick these up. I can't think where they are. Again, clubs that have, uh, that have been in my bag and performed incredibly well, like I said. Um, if you want to recap as to why, I love that wide sole. I think it's very sort of, uh, again, user friendly and would appeal to more golfers than it wouldn't. It's not for everybody, but I think it's a, a major bonus. I also think it's what you'd call as a, a game improvement iron. Why would you go and buy a set of irons like the majority of us do that are effectively either game improvement or some kind of muscle back iron and then choose to buy wedges that are effectively blades? I really don't get that. So for me, the idea of putting uh, at least one of these on, if you want to have that blade type wedge, then yes, I understand maybe a little bit more versatility. But to put one of these in the bag to help you when confidence is low, these things just don't seem to do anything wrong. And from any lie, any situation, they pick the ball up so easy, it's incredible. And at 79.99, we're putting two of these in the bag. So that's uh, buying a couple of pence. That's another 160 quid onto the bill. And we've got to get a putter in there somehow. And I've got to make sure we ain't going to drop the quality. We've got an amazing bag put together so far. And I ain't going to let that slip with the putter. Right, one more club to go. And arguably the club where you can save a fair bit of money. I think this is easier to buy a sort of a second hand option or a less expensive option but we set out with one goal and that was to get current product so for me i'm going to choose the odyssey tuttle putter again mallet style i've mentioned the word user friendly enough on this video i think again for most average golfers uh, that style of putter face balanced got some uh, stability in it to say the least lovely face on these odyssey tuttle putters as well they're ticking all the boxes you would want in a putter, or at least I would anyway. And again, coming in at a price, 119, £119. Pound. The list is building. So we could have saved a lot of money, I think, in this area, if that was the case. But I'm sticking with it. We're putting the Odyssey Tuttle as the last product to go in the bag. And we'll talk about that grand total. 
So the purpose of today's video was to build a bag uh, for around that thousand pound. The grand total will come up on screen for you now, as will the breakdown. And I think arguably we're sort of in and around there. We may have gone a little bit over in terms of budget. And like I said, there's a couple of options there. The wedges you could change uh, for a lesser price product, as you could the putter, as you could arguably all, I suppose. But I think what we managed to put together um, was an incredibly good set from putter through to driver. I did a video last week, as I said, that cost £2,600 to put together. It doesn't need to be that, clearly. I know that, you know that, but there's an example of where we can put together a bag for a thousand pound, which is still an incredibly amount of money. And no doubt in the second hand market, we could do a whole different job again. And maybe the next video is how we put this together on the second hand market for 500 pound. And I'm sure it's achievable. The point is, golf is always claimed to be a very expensive and exclusive sport and if you choose it to be that way then yes of course it can be but like anything else there are plenty of options out there and uh, if you put your mind to it and if you have a bit of a route around and if you watch some other youtube channels as well that do some uh, reviews on second hand product then you'll soon see that there are plenty of options for everybody to get enjoying this game at uh, whatever price point they wish to enter it at but going back to what we did today that's an incredible uh, lineup a great set of products and to be honest with you it reminds you that uh, a low products like i said move on each year things like that g400 range incredible so so good um do we really need to change our drivers do we need to change anything i don't know but anyway they're the uh, they're the questions we always ask in every video we do with this one thank you for watching uh still finding my way in terms of this bay we've got plenty of work to do we're sort of half done at the moment um but uh, different camera angles trying to make it work we've got some software coming very very shortly that'll make it uh, all the more interesting to watch i hope but for now thanks for watching uh, hit that thumbs up give your comments down below what do you think of the bag for under a thousand pound any of those that you choose to buy yourself and i'll see you soon